Hey guys, it's been quite silent on this channel for the past few months. I further strengthened my Godo skills and completed my first little prototype. As a diver you have to explore caves and collect diamonds while your oxygen level rapidly decreases. And you also have to avoid exploding mines and aggressive fishes. The first part of this tutorial will cover Godot's standard parallax feature and how I implemented it in my diving game. And in the second part I will introduce you to Godot's new pseudo 3D possibilities with the coming up version 3.2. This feature lets you easily bring more depth to your mid and foregrounds as well. Sounds good? Let's get started. Let's start by creating a new 2D scene and adding a parallax background as a child node of our main node. For each texture you want to place in the background, you also need a parallax layer node as a child node of the parallax background node. The parallax layer node is where the action takes place. Next I simply drag in my background textures into the scene and place them beneath the respective parallax layer nodes. To make the parallax effect work we make sure that the textures offset centered box is unchecked. And if we reset the transform settings of the texture, the upper left corner of our textures will align perfectly with the origin of our scene. And we also want to make sure that our textures fill the entire viewport of the game scene. To fulfill the tiny pixel art design of this game, I have reduced the width and height settings on the display window to 600 times 400 entered a test width of 1024 times 600 test height set the stretch mode to 2d and the aspect to keep and for the import settings of the textures i enabled repeat and disabled the filter flag so we don't get blurry effects for our textures we click on the sprite node of our textures and have a look at the height and width values to make our textures fill the whole screen for my background texture, which has a size of 288 times 256, I enable the region flag and enter 4 times 288 for the width and 2 times 256 for the height of the texture on the screen. For the mid-round texture, I leave all the settings as they are, as it already has a reasonable size, which covers more than the visible screen for now. Now I have repeated regions of my textures on the screen who form my parallax background layers. But the parallax layer also has to repeat itself after the player has reached the end of the visible viewport. Here the mirroring attribute of the parallax layer is important. Background and midground texture now fill the whole screen. Both of their regions end at 512 in y direction and this is the value I enter for Y in my mirroring attribute of the parallax layers. And instantly you can see how both parallax layers are mirrored in the editor. For testing purposes I now instantiate my player controller scene which also has a child node of a 2D camera. The player's camera node is centered and I drag my player in the middle of my parallax background. Also you can see that the child elements of my player node are editable. This is because I want to set limits for my camera 2D to move. I set the limits for my camera to move something around 200 pixels in X and Y direction. Then I play this scene and as you can see my player moves but there is no parallax effect for now. This is where the motion scale property of the parallax layers comes into play. The background layer is drawn first as its node is located above the midground layer. But it should also move more slowly than the midground. Low motion scale values of a parallax layer let it move slower than other parallax or canvas layers. For this reason I gave the midground an X and Y value for its motion scale of 0.8 and the background a lower X and Y value for the motion scale of 0.6. And if I now hit play again you will see that if I move the player, mid and background also move at different speeds in relation to another and create a nice parallax effect for the background. Now what if you want to bring more depth to your foreground elements as well? You might already be familiar with the node called canvas layer. 
In past Godot versions, this one was used to add stationary textures in the foreground or a quick GUI to your game scenes, which would not move with the viewport. But to give your 2D games a modern touch, the Canvas Layer Node now gets two new properties – Scale and Follow Viewport. With the help of a canvas layer, we can fake a perspective camera for 2D games. To demonstrate you this feature, I created a small time map for my diving game. And with the help of the time map, I built a quick cave for this scene. Then I made the time map a child node of a canvas layer node. If you are interested in the time map editor, please check out my other Godot tutorials. To get more depth for the midground, I duplicated the canvas layer time app nodes and reduced the scale just a tiny bit for the canvas layer. To make canvas layer nodes move with the player, you have to enable the follow viewport property. For the duplicated layer, I set the layer from 0 to minus 1 to make it appear behind the player. I also gave it a little black tint using the modulate property. Of course, you want to make some adjustments so the two time apps don't look exactly the same. Anytime you can preview the result of your design in the editor by checking the view preview canvas scale checkbox. And to add some bigger foreground elements, I repeat this process and quickly create a third canvas layer time app combination and load my tile set. I give the time map a darker tint so it does not distract from the midground. Then I go on and set the canvas layers layer to 2 so this foreground layer is in front of the other layers. Again I check follow viewport on the canvas layer and enhance the scale to 1.6 so the items on the time map are bigger and moving quicker than the other tile maps in the scene. Then I go on by placing those scary looking statues in my scene. Hitting start again you see that the foreground elements are moving quicker than the other layers in the scene. I hope this new feature will give you inspiration for your own 2D projects. I'll be back with more Godot 2D stuff tutorials soon. Oh and your thumb up makes me happy and your subscription even more. Cheers!